Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful Friday. Hallelujah. August 19th, 2022. It is 3.15 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak, folks. Again, thank you guys continually. I give God praise for you all to join me as we do this daily devotional out of our daily bread. Uh, 365 devotions uh, titled Stand Strong. With that being said, uh, today's title is The Underbird, Underbird in quotes. And our study scriptures is out of James. James chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. Folks, please find some time to read that. I did, and it's very critical to this devotional. But our lead off verse is uh, out of the Gospel of Luke chapter 12, verse 7. The background there behind me, I think that's actually 6 and 7. The top of it got cut off, but you can read it. Uh, <clears throat> and the word of God says, indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Kind of sounds like a command, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, our author today, David Egner, goes on to write this. <laughs> Old peanuts. Charlie Brown, the comic strip character, identified with the underdog. Yes, he was. Probably because he felt like one. In one scene, he was building a birdhouse when the cynical Lucy came by. I'm building it for sparrows, Charlie told her. <laughs> Praise God, Charlie Brown. Uh, Lucy said, for sparrows, nobody builds birdhouses for sparrows. Uh-oh, Lucy. I do, he replied. I always stick up for the underbird. At times, Christians may overlook the sparrows, the little people in the worlds, in their worlds. They may ignore those they view as less valuable. I pray we don't, folks. Uh, James said that we should avoid partiality. This is in our study scriptures and favoritism. There's no excuse for disrespecting people with our attitudes and words. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus didn't do this. He crossed all kinds of traditional barriers to talk with tax collectors, sinners, non-Jews, people of mixed races, the poor, as well as the rich. That's pretty much everybody. He came to identify with each of us and to pay the price on the cross for all of our sins. When a sparrow falls, the father takes note of it, but he cares much more for people including the underbird. Perhaps we need a little more Charlie Brown in us. Perhaps maybe we do, folks. Uh, amen. Good one. Uh, yeah, I did go. I went ahead and I read James chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. And you, you can read more, folks, whatever, whatever you feel led to read. But it's in there talking about, so for me personally, it's talking about the church today. We are so judgmental in a lot of churches, not every church. You know, God, I do believe God is truly clean in house. Uh, the churches that are judgmental and hypocritical, I think God's going to, he's going to shut them down. We're to, uh, we're to love everybody. We're to, we're to allow everybody to, to come and learn the word of God and have that relationship with Christ. And we're supposed to reach out and help those less fortunate but in James, it's talking about, you know, the, the dude that comes in with the fancy suit and the jewelry and all that. And everybody's like, oh, you know, come on up here. You sit up front, sit up front. But then, you know, some homeless man that needs Christ, uh, they say, well, you know, you can just stand out in the lobby and listen from out there. You know, a lot of churches are like that, folks. But um, you're talking about the sparrow and you know Charlie Brown. You know, this is like a beautiful parable. If you can picture Charlie Brown playing God building that birdhouse, you know, which is kind of these temples. We know that. And uh, for the underbird, I've never, I've heard the underdog, but I've never heard the underbird. But, um, you know, God, God loves us so more, so more than, God loves everything. You know, don't get me wrong. He created everything, you know, including the, the birds in the air. That's a, his word says that. But uh, to know that, that humans, humans are the only creation he's got, he's made that has sin that ever sin. Animals can't sin. Plants and trees and all that, they can't sin. Fish, creatures, nothing like that can sin. Only humans. And that's why God loves us so much more than the animals. And, I, you know, some people may disagree with that, but I believe the word will back that up. Cares very much more for us. And the word tells us that. 
that, uh, you know, he just wants that intimate relationship restored back to the way it was before we messed it up. And I got to say we, because we is the body, you know, we, we said it all the time. One, one part of the body messes up, it affects the whole body. But, um, I, I just, uh, <laughs> I had, to, I had to laugh when I read Luke 12, seven, because it, it says even the, the very hairs of your head are numbered Well, folks. You know, I try to I try to make God's job a little bit easier, you know, but even still, he still even when I had a full head of hair, even before I surrendered to Christ, God knew every single hair on my head. Now, folks, I had some hair. I had some hair and uh, he knew every number. And no doubt in my mind, wherever that hair is, God knows where it's at. You know, number two thousand four hundred and twenty seven. God knows where it's at. Um, that's how much he loves us to the to the very detail, guys. I mean, you think about that. You know, we've heard it before that there's no two people that have the same fingerprint in the entire world. This is past, present, and future yet to come, people. No, no identical fingerprints. Who else but God can do that? Who else can number the hairs on your head? He, he knows the hairs on your body, folks, not just your head. But he knows every single intricate detail about you because he created you. He formed you in your mother's womb. That's how much God loves you and cares about you. And when we were reading, uh, what, what did we read here? Uh, well, our, our lead off verse in Luke 12, 7, don't be afraid. That is a command. When Jesus tells you to do something or don't do something, those are commands. So don't be afraid. And that's all throughout scripture. There's so much scripture telling us that. But don't be afraid. Don't worry. You are worth more than many sparrows. So guys, um, if, you know, Satan, again, is getting in that head of yours and telling you that, you know, God just doesn't love you. You keep messing up. Nothing you ever do is going to make him happy. Man, is that a lie. That is such a lie, guys. I fall short every day, and I know that. And I know that because I'm in this body. But this body does not define who I am. This body is sin tainted because of what happened in the Garden of Eden from the beginning. But guys, when you understand it, it's this, it's this body that falls short, not the true you, the spirit being inside of you, that, that when you were born again, you became a, a new creation, a new living spirit being. That is the true you. These bodies, they're going to fail every day. They're going to fall short. But the stronger you become spiritually and the more you get in the word of God and uh, com communicate with him and have that relationship with him, the more your spirit being, the, the real you, will actually be able to dominate the physical part of you, your body, the flesh, the tent you're in. That's a, that's a, for me, that's a huge part of fasting. You know, if you've ever been on a fast, that's you, the spirit you, telling your body, hey, I'm in control. But guys, that's really not tying in with this devotional. It's just the Lord led me. But um, you're looking at Jesus. He, 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 sees, he sees all of us identical. But, uh, you know, we can ask ourselves, are we? Are we seeing each other identical or are we judging based on appearance? Um, I don't know what scripture it is, but it tells us, you know, be careful, you know, who, how you treat people because you never know when you might be entertaining an angel. God could very well send somebody in your path just to see your reaction. God will test you. He'll test you every day. Believe me, he does. Just to see how you react. Are you going to look at that person that could very well be an angel with the same way, the same openness, the same love as you would somebody you already know. So the guys, that's that's what I'm getting from this message today. God may be speaking to you differently. If he is, praise God, because that's how he does. He just take, he takes the word and lets each of us hear it differently. And he'll continue to speak with you as long as you get alone with him. Read these scriptures, pray, call on him, and just, uh, just let him continue to work in you and through you guys. Again, all for his glory. So until tomorrow on Saturday the 20th, Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord has in. Love you guys.